This is going to be an example of the use of undetermined coefficients to solve a second degree constant coefficient forced ordinary differential equation. <clears throat> so here we have our second order ODE. Uh, we, we see that it is constant coefficients. There are no T dependencies on the left hand side, uh, only on the right hand side in the forcing. And so it's a constant coefficient problem with some uh, initial conditions. So let's apply the method of undetermined coefficients. The, the first thing we need to do is verify that it is a constant coefficient problem, which we see it is. We've already talked about that. Doesn't work for any other uh, kind of problem besides constant coefficients. But having done that, uh, the first thing we need to do is find the homogeneous solutions. <clears throat> so step one is to find the homogeneous solutions. And to do that, we look at the associated homogeneous problem, where this term has been set to zero. And that homogeneous problem we would solve using uh, a guess, e to the lambda t. And when we insert that guess into the, uh, into the homogeneous problem, each derivative in t would pull down a power of lambda. We would get a lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 1. All of those would be multiplying e to the lambda t. And this would be uh, the, the reduction of the homogeneous problem under the guess x of t equals e to the lambda t. Now, the only way this can be 0, of course, is if this part here is 0. This is called the characteristic equation. And so we must find values of lambda for which the characteristic equation is 0. This is a very simple characteristic equation. It can be factored lambda plus 1 squared equals 0. <clears throat> And so we have a double root, lambda equals minus 1. Now, uh, as we know from the theory of constant coefficient ODEs, uh, one solution is given by this value of lambda. We get one homogeneous solution, C1e to the minus t. Uh, but we only get one value of lambda, and so uh, to find a second solution, we would in principle have to use reduction of order, which would show us that the second homogeneous solution is t, e to the minus t. So we have found our uh, homogeneous solutions and the roots of our, our characteristic equation. We'll just rewrite that. OK, so we found the homogeneous problem. And we now turn to the particular solution, undetermined coefficients. This is really where undetermined coefficients comes in. But given a general problem, you first have to find the homogeneous solution. So OK, we now turn to our guess, our, our guess for undetermined coefficients. It's a simple exponential. <coughs> And so uh, the naive guess for undetermined coefficients would be I have a simple exponential, and derivatives preserve the form of that exponential. So I'll simply guess a e to the minus t. However, that guess will not work because e to the minus t is itself a solution to the homogeneous problem. Uh, this could be called uh, a resonant forcing, even though it's not a sinusoidal uh, forcing as, as that word typically applies to sinusoidal cases. But in, in general, it is a forcing of the same form as one of the homogeneous solutions. And so we could, in an abstract sense, apply the word resonant to that forcing. So this won't work. If I plug in this guess, a e to the minus t, uh, the left-hand side operating on this will equal 0, because this is a solution to the homogeneous problem. <clears throat> so what we have here is a case where the forcing is resonant and the root of the characteristic equation that produced these two solutions was a, was a single root with multiplicity 2. And so what we need to do to this guess in order to make it a correct guess is multiply it by t to the power of 2, corresponding to the multiplicity of that root. So that's no good if we had made a, a slightly less naive adjustment and said, well, I know that something about multiply by t 
you'd see that we would again fail to, to use the method of undetermined coefficients with that guess, because t e to the minus t is also a homogeneous solution. So that's not our guess, that's our naive guess, but then we need to multiply it by t squared. <clears throat> and if we now plug this in <clears throat> to the differential equation, we'll get two derivatives of t squared times e to the minus t plus twice the derivative of this times the derivative of that, which will give us minus 4t e to the minus t plus t squared times two derivatives of e to the minus t. That'll give us t squared e to the minus t. Then we have 2 times our first derivative. I'll pull out an a again. And the first derivative of that will be 2t e to the minus t uh, minus t squared e to the minus t plus x. And our guess for the particular solution is a t squared e to the minus t. Must equal our forcing on the right hand side e to the minus t. So things cancel. Let's see, we've got a t squared e to the minus t minus 2a t squared e to the minus t plus a t squared e to the minus t. So those all cancel. <clears throat> then we have a minus 4a t e to the minus t and a plus 4a t e to the minus t. So those cancel. And all we're left with is 2a e to the minus t must equal e to the minus t. So 2a equals 1. A equals a half. And so we found our particular solution, 1 half t squared e to the minus t. So the general solution is 1 half t squared e to the minus t plus c1 e to the minus t plus c2 t e to the minus t. And we now need to satisfy the initial conditions. The last thing we do after we find the general solution, we satisfy the initial conditions. So what do we get when we plug in these initial conditions? We have x of 0, which is 0, 0, c1, must equal 1. And the derivative of x at 0 must be 0. This one's going to be a bit harder. Uh, the derivative of this term is negative c1 e to the minus t. And at 0, that gives us a minus c1. And the others I'm not going to try to do in my head. I'll just take the derivatives plus c2 e to the minus t minus t e to the minus t. Product rule applied to this solution. Evaluated at 0 plus derivative of 2t will give us t e to the minus t minus 1 half t squared e to the minus t evaluated at 0. Uh, that's 0, that's 0, that's 0, and so we pick up a c2. So minus c1 plus c2 equals 0, and since c1 is 1, that means c2 is also 1. So we're basically done. We'll just rewrite it. The solution that satisfies all of these criteria is 1 half t squared e to the minus t. c1 and c2 are both 1, and so we have plus e to the minus t plus t 